Now, as you can see, we have our next very insightful speaker here. This is Marion Wright Edelman. Did I say that correctly? Thank you. I guess she needs no introduction. Here we go, people. Thank you so much to all of you who've come today. Thank you for all the young people who have worked so hard to organize this rally. We're very proud of you. And for those of you who came from other places, but thanks to all the Yaltas who have planned this event and staffed this event. Thanks to the community groups that are here and the faith groups that have supported you today. And I want to thank all the CDF Minnesota staff. But I just am so glad to be with all of you on this very beautiful day in this place. This day is about trying to begin to engage young people in a more systematic way in building a movement for our children. It's going to take a long time. This is the beginning and the building a movement that's going to transform the priorities of the country is a marathon. It is not a one event fair. So we look forward to these kinds of efforts growing and growing and growing until we are heard everywhere in America and we change the way America treats our children. We start that. We started that on November 2nd. You had your senators, and we're glad that the senators and gubernatorial candidates and others came today. But now we have to follow up, and I want to make sure that everybody here of voting age registers to vote, or is already registered to vote, unless you have same-day registration. If you're an absentee ballantee person and you're on college campuses, you make sure you get that ballot and you get it in wherever you live. And if you're here, you make sure you go out to vote. Anybody who says they love and care about children and don't vote are not telling the truth. So let's just be very clear, you gotta vote. I want you to go to CDF Action Council website and look at how your senators and congressmen voted. And I want to thank those who are doing 100%. Senator Al Franken and, and Senator Klobuchar are both 100% on our latest voting record. <laughs> Representative Keith Allison, Representative Betty McCollum, Representative James Oberstar, Representative Tim Waltz are also 100% on our voting record. <laughs> Representative we have a 70 percenter, um, but the overall score, but well, let's go down to Representative Michelle Bachman with zero. She's our one zero percenter in Minnesota, so you need to work with her to see if she can't pass the test of protecting children. Representative John Klein is also a zero. You need to let him hear from you. And Representative Eric Paulson is 30 percent. We've got an overall score for all of Minnesota's representatives of 61%. That is not a passing score, so all of your people have to be held accountable so that Miss Minnesota's delegation in Congress can pass the step of protecting children. Go to the website, you can see all the votes, you can see how they voted on specific issues, so please do your homework. I just want to talk a little bit about Noah's Ark because my sister sent me an old worn out clipping that I looked at, and I think that everything our nation and all of us need to know about what life can be, can be learned from Noah's Ark according to this anonymous writer. And I want to share a few of his lessons. Lesson one from Noah's Ark is don't miss the boat. The United States is going to miss the boat to lead and compete in our globalizing world because we are not preparing a majority of all of our children for the future. The greatest threat to America's national security lies from no enemy without, but from our failure to invest in and educate all of our children. Every 11 seconds, just think about this, of every school day, a child drops out of school and every 32 seconds a child is born into poverty. A majority of all children in all racial and income groups cannot read in 4th, 8th, or 12th grade at grade level if they have not already dropped out of school. And over 80% 
of black and Hispanic children cannot read at grade level in fourth, eighth, or twelfth grade if they have not already dropped out. And whether or not we may like these other people's children, they're going to be a majority of all America's children by 2023. We need them, and we need to have them educated. So all of us need to prepare these children for productive work because a child who cannot read and write in this economy is being sentenced to social and economic death. And Minnesota has perhaps one of the largest achievement gaps between its non-white and white children in America and Minnesota needs to do better. And all of us have to be a part of the solution as parents, as educators, as young people, as community and political leaders, if we are going to be ready to compete in the new century. We are not ready right now. Lesson two, we are all in the same boat. The central message of today's rally, and I loved what Garrison Keillor was talking about in terms of all of us paying attention to the common good. Many Americans may not think they have any self-interest in ensuring a fair playing field for other people's children. But you know, we're going to need them. I think it's better to have those children supporting strong Social Security and Medicare systems and ensuring a productive workforce than for us to all be supporting them and all of these prisons that we're building around the country making us the world's leading jailer. Our states are spending on average three times more per prisoner than per public pupil and I can't think of a dumber investment policy. We need to change it. And we need to break up the cradle to prison pipeline which is becoming the new American apartheid. The third lesson from Noah's Ark is to plan ahead. It was not raining when Noah built the ark. And whether or not we recognize it, tomorrow is today. And children have only one childhood. Providing all children a healthy start and quality early childhood experiences, first-rate schools and first-rate teachers, and stimulating high-quality out-of-school programs must be the first order of Minnesota business and must be the first order of national business in our quick-fix, quarterly, profit-driven culture. we got to plan ahead. Lesson four from Mr. Noah. Don't listen to the critics and the naysayers. Just get on with the job that needs to be done to educate and protect our children. And young people, don't be afraid of taking risks. If you don't want to be criticized, don't say anything, don't do anything, and don't be anything. And don't be afraid of failing. That's just the way you learn to do it right. So you just keep getting up every time you fall down. Lesson five from Mr. Noah. For safety's sake, travel in pairs. Or better still, travel with your brothers and your sisters and community leaders like those gathered today. And we must continue to resist those who try to hijack Dr. King's words while subverting his call to end poverty, excessive militarism, and racism in America. And let's fight. And one of the key tests of who's for children over the next year is going to be who votes to extend those massive tax cuts for the top 2% of billionaires and millionaires. They shouldn't have had them in the first place. They don't need them now. And it's obscene morally to talk about giving hundreds of billions of dollars to people who don't need it in the top 2% when we have 15.5 million children living in poverty. That's not right. And we should be clear and let our leaders know in the Senate and in the House that we want them to vote against giving those tax cuts to the top 2% and invest that money in education and early childhood for our children. Lesson six, and really listen to this one because that means you've got to do it. Nobody's going to do it for us. Remember that the ark was built by amateurs. The Titanic was built by professionals. Use your citizen power, your vote, to wrest our ship of state from that small group of experts and powerful and greedy corporate pirates who recklessly jeopardized all of our lives for personal gain. And the last lesson from Nora's Ark I want to share today is that we must build our nation's future 
And every one of you young people need to build your future on high ground, not the kind of low ground that our divisive politics is trying to lead us to. Let's leave our nation and Minnesota as a state and world better than we found it. More just, more hopeful, more peaceful, more productive, and more unified. This may be the first time in our history where our nation's children and grandchildren will be worse off than their parents and grandparents unless we correct course and do whatever is necessary to get them to safe harbor. So I want to just end with a prayer. God, we have pushed so many of our children into the tumultuous sea of life in small and leaky boats without survival gear and compass. Please forgive us and help our children to forgive us and help each of us here today get our nation to commit to giving all of your children the anchors of faith and love, the rudder of hope, the sails of health and education, and the paddles of family and community to keep them safe and strong when life's sea gets rough. I thank you for your witness today. Let's go out and vote. Let's organize, organize, and organize, and build a movement where children come first. Thank you. Yeah. Give it up for Mrs. Edelman.